We want to see Jesus To reach out and touch Him And say that we love Him Open our ears, Lord And help us to listen Open our eyes, Lord We want to see Jesus Let's bow and pray Our Father, how good it is to know that you love us We thank you, Father, for the great sacrifice that you have made in our behalf We thank you today for these mothers that are represented here, and we ask that you might just bless each of them, not only on this day, but every day of their lives. Help them as they model life for their children. Be with these graduates, Lord, as they embark upon a new era in their lives. We just ask for your guidance, direction, and help them to respond in faith and faithfulness. Father, we thank you for your wonderful grace. We ask these things in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. The message today is, um, I think, appropriate from God's Word concerning this, this occasion, Mother's Day, and celebration of graduations, or graduates. As we think about a good mother's impression, last week uh, I was asked to sing a song I'd never sang before uh, by Sister Eunice. It's called The Hands That Rock the Cradle Rule the World. Um, I spared some of you. They wanted Some of you wanted me to do it again, but <laughs> I spared, spared you from that, but This emphasis, really, this saying emphasizes the strong influence that mothers have in our world. And it's in every culture. It really points out the importance of the values and the priorities, the behaviors, the moral, spiritual integrity that are being broadcast to children everywhere by their parents. I want to share beginning in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul is writing to this young man. And he says this. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I'm persuaded now lives in you also. And for this reason, I remind you to flan, fan and to flame the gift of God. Okay. I want you to notice this faithful mother's model. And let me, let me hasten to say this. I don't know what kind of mother you are or what kind of mother you have or had. I do know this, that even if you had a good mother, you didn't have a perfect one. And you need to understand that because we're not perfect people yet. God is trying to push us that direction. In fact, He's not simply pushing us, He's leading us in that direction. But we're not perfect. And, and you, may, you may come from a, a home that your parents were not were not followers of Christ as you were growing up. But don't let that become an excuse for your failure to do so. Because we can't allow our environments to dictate who we become. Let me say that again. 
We cannot allow or use an excuse the environments from which we come as an excuse for not becoming what God can enable us to be. Each of us has to make a personal decision to trust Jesus. But let me tell you something else. If you, like I was, I had the privilege of growing up in a home whose mother loved the Lord and was faithful to Him. And it made a great impact upon my life. And it gave me a head start upon the lives of some others. And so if you're from a home where your, your family has guided and directed you, toward the Lord. You can be greatly thankful because you have, you have received an advantage that some homes don't have. And you ought to be truly grateful for that. But a faithful mother's model is really evident. It's an evident faith. We notice that he speaks here of a sincere, not shallow, not superficial, not hypocritical, but a genuine faith. In other words, there was something more to Grandma Lois and Mama Eunice pattern of life that was distinguished from a lot of other, quote, religious lives. Their life was not superficial. It wasn't just, you know, once a week or every now and so often or, you know, uh, if, oh, you know, if someone from the church is present, but it was a daily, consistent life. It was not hidden or masked. It was something open, and it could be open because even though they were not perfect, they were walking with Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit in God's Word to direct their living. Not only how they behaved, but how they were thinking what they thought. It was a sincere, genuine faith. A faithful mother's model is evident in that it was scripturally directed. You see, in chapter 3, he wrote, Paul wrote to this young man, Timothy, and he said in verse 15, How from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And so this, these, this mother and this grandmother, they used the scriptures to help mold and direct and counsel the life of Timothy. And this evident faith was one that resided in her heart and in their lives. It says, which dwelt, which dwelt or lived, resided in their lives. And so again, it was something that was daily. But a faithful mother's model is also a challenged faith. And listen carefully, moms, as we share this. It's a challenged faith. Because in this particular instance, concerning Eunice, Timothy's mother, her faith was challenged by a divided companionship. When Paul first met Timothy, he was in the city of Lystra. And it says in Acts 16, he met there a disciple named Timothy. And he lived whose mother was a Jewish and, her, and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. But he came from a, a family where his mother was a believer in Jesus, but his father wasn't. That's a hard, that's a hard relationship. When the nearest companion of your life, if there's, a, if there's, if there's not that, that spiritual glue that holds you together in Christ, 
it makes life more difficult for the believer, whether it's the father who's a believer and mom's not, or the mother's a believer. But I think it's, it's significant. It makes it a more challenging thing. But it's still possible. And so some of you may be challenged by a divided companionship. You're trusting Jesus, but your spouse isn't. And I understand that makes it more difficult. It's challenging. It's a ch it challenges your faithfulness. But rise to meet the challenge. Because God can and will enable you. And your children need you to meet that challenge. But it's also challenged, as most of you mothers know, it's challenged by daily chores. What is the old saying? A man's work from dusk till dawn, but a mama's work is never done. Yeah, I, I thought I'd hear some amens from some of the mamas. But I did see some heads shaking like this. The reality is, mama's faith can be challenged sometimes because there's so much busyness, so many things to do. But you see, when we do all things to the glory of God, it all fits together like a puzzle. But it's also a challenged faith because it's challenged by a destructive culture. Paul mentioned that in, to Timothy in this letter in verse 12 in chapter 3. He says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. We live in a destructive culture. Our culture even today here in the States are trying to discredit many of the teachings of God's Word. Trying to say that, um, you know, change uh, our ideas or at least to get us to hush about them. But it's important that Christian people share the light of God's truth. It's very important that they do that. We live in a, a culture that's challenged. Listen, moms, your, your kids are out in that culture a lot more, a lot more than they're just about anywhere. A lot more than they're in church. And let me put a plug in for coming to Sunday school. In Sunday school, your kids can learn some facts of Scripture that when they hear a message or, or they begin to read or study themselves, they say, oh yeah, I see how that fits now. I see how that fits. But you know, moms, your faith is also challenged by a conflict of desires. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, I'm talking about what Paul was talking about when he wrote to the Galatians. And he said this in chapter 5 and verses 16 and 17. He says, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Sounds to me like you still have those desires, right? For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other. They're in conflict with each other. And so there's going to be a battle, and that's one of the reasons Paul said, I die daily. Now, he didn't die physically, but he surrendered himself daily to live and walk in accordance with the Spirit of God that is directed through the Word of God. And you're going to be challenged by your nature. There's going to be times when you're going to feel, you're going to be in a bad mood. You ever been in a bad mood, Mom? Let me ask your kids. <laughs> right. Mom ever been in a bad mood? Yeah, sure. And... You're going to be challenged by that. But you need to say, Lord, forgive me and help me. Help me be better. But a faithful mother's model is also, we notice from the example of 
Eunice, and instructive faith. The faith that she, and the instruction she gave basically was instruction from the Scriptures. From the Scriptures. Again, we look again at our passage found in the third chapter of 2 Timothy. And let me read that beginning in verse 14, chapter 3. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those things from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All right, notice this. She instructed Timothy. How? Primarily, what was the, what was the manual? The Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures. And you know why that was so important? Because the Holy Scriptures is the only book, it's the only study that will direct you to a soul salvation. It's the only instruction. You can learn every other manual. You can study every other model. You can go into psychology. You can go into theology. You can go into uh, in any kind of uh, law. You can become expert in medicine and any of these things. But there's only one book where you can find what your soul needs for eternal life. And that's the book of God. The Holy Scriptures. And I think it's interesting here that Eunice instigated this study during infancy. In other words, when, when, when Timothy was just a baby. Now, you know, there's been some who have argued, well, you know, I think that we should wait and, and not push any kind of religious ideas on a, on a kid until they're kind of old enough to start thinking about it and thinking for themselves. Let me tell you, if you do that, you know what you've done? You've just given the devil a real head start. Because he starts working immediately. You say, well, that's not true. Yeah, it is. What's the first, first words that most kids learn? No. No. You don't have to teach them. You don't have to teach a child to be selfish. That's their nature. And if you don't want the devil to get a head start on your kid, because listen, your kid, did you know even in the womb, the baby is, knows and will recognize mama's voice when they're born, even from the womb. And if dad's been around, they, they'll recognize those, those voices. They'll recognize them. They're learning already. And so don't wait until your kid's a certain age before you start training them in the Lord. Begin with the concrete things. Yeah, sure, their abstract thinking may not have developed, but their factual, their concrete things are developing. And so you teach them the concrete truths, and then as their abstract thinking begins to develop, then you can help them explain not just the what, but the why, and help them think about those things. And believe me, Mama Eunice's instruction, based on the Scriptures, instigated in infancy, was intended to persuade and equip her son. For life with God. You know, I don't care how much time you spend as a mom or as a parent trying to help your kid get through school. There's no learning more important than what Mama Eunice was trying to get through to Timothy. There's none more important. Because all success in this life, all unsuccess in this life, stops at the same place, at the graveside. Doesn't matter how, how few of things you have or how many things you have, you're all going to stop at the same spot, at the graveside. 
And so we need to be reaching and teaching our kids how to get farther and to trust in the Lord Jesus. Now, we've talked about a good mother's faith. But to you graduates and to you kids, I want to say some things. The book of Proverbs says, do not forsake your mother's teaching. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. Goes on in another place and says, it's like a garland. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 through 22. It's a little longer, but just for short sake. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. Secondly, Paul wrote as we, to Timothy, and he said in verse 14, continue in what you have learned. Continue in what you have learned. Um, you see, before, before we can really get things into our heart, we've got to get things into our head. You've got to know something before you can really act on something. And so mom, give them something from God's Word. Let them know who Jesus is. Let them know how uh, God has provided for us to have a relationship with Him. Continue in what you've learned. But then he says, he doesn't stop there. He says also, continue in what you have become convinced of. You see, unfortunately, and I hope this isn't true of, of Abby and Sophia, and I pray it isn't true of them, but a lot of kids that grew up in church don't go to church anymore. Even though they were given a good mother's impression, even though they had an illustration of what a life of faith should look like, they leave. Because they learned but they never become convinced. You see, it's one thing to know about something. And it's another thing to know something. To really know someone who is Jesus. And Paul is saying, you know, I want you to you've, continue in what you've learned. Don't lose that base. But you've become convinced of this and it's changing your life. And you are walking in faith. Not because mama said, but because you have learned and become convinced of the truths that mama taught. And to you, young folks, Allow the Holy Scriptures to equip you for every good work. Paul went on to say, he says, All Scripture is God-breathed, and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's what a faithful mom wants from her children. Let me tell you something. If you have a, a Christian mother, I want to tell you something. You may not realize this. But more than anything else in all the world she wants from you is she wants you to know her Jesus. She wants you to know her Jesus. Because nothing short of Jesus can give them the peace and the joy and the satisfaction of life. And to give them a home in heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you today. Again, Lord, thank you for mothers. Especially, Lord, for godly mothers. Thank you for these who have endured through the education system and graduated. Help them as they move forward. 
But Lord, today, I want to ask your Holy Spirit to speak to hearts that stand in need of Jesus. Help them to realize that they shouldn't wait till things in their life improve, but that they need to come to you as they are humbled and submissive and willing to trust you. And Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.